Okay. Let's see if we can get this right. All right, we're good now. First of all, um, I, where is my husband? He's somewhere. Can you kind of wave? He's my rock. Okay, excellent. I got to know where he is. All right. Um, thank you, President Riggs and, um, and everyone up here on the podium um, for inviting me here today um, and that kind introduction. It is truly a wonderful opportunity to be able to address you, the class of 2014. To return to Gettysburg College, um, where I began my adult life, is really a true honor and, and actually somewhat surreal. Uh, this college and the four years I spent here really played an integral role in my, part, in my life. Um, I can remember when I arrived here in September of 1979, similar to the way that Brandon described it, um, with that great mixture of fear and apprehension and excitement. Um, but Gettysburg was one of the best decisions I ever made in my life. And not just because I met that guy over there in the basement of Lambda Chi in my junior year. Um, but being here with my husband um, on graduation day brings back memories of me sitting in those chairs and him and looking at our graduation speaker. And as it was said, if you had told me 30 years ago that I would be standing up here in the uniform of an army officer and a general officer besides that, I would have scoffed at you. It would have seemed absolutely improbable that that's where I had landed, a professional soldier. I, I joined the army, to be honest with you, because of that fraternity boy. He was also an ROTC scholarship student, and so he had to come into the army and I didn't want to take a bar exam at every state and station that he was stationed. And so I joined the Army. I took a chance. I did not let my fear of failure, my fear of the unknown, hold me back. I joined the Army. Now you're wondering um, where all this is going. You know, I clearly understand we're not here to talk about my past. We're here to talk about your future. Um, but I also think that it just, if I could just take a second, since I had a daughter who graduated last weekend from college, and give my sincere congratulations also to the parents, the siblings, and the loved ones who are very much a part of the success of the class of 2014. So I also would like you to give all of those folks back there a hand. And, and to the graduates, I mean, you are bright, you're energetic, you're gifted, and life awaits you, the foundation of which was built here at Gettysburg, and it is filled with great opportunities, there is no question. And there are many philosophers out there um, who could give you cautionary and inspiring tales um, and words of wisdom, your mom, your dad, um, you know, Oprah, you, you choose that philosopher, but since I'm up here, I get to choose the greatest philosopher of all times, according to me, and that would be Dr. Seuss. In his famous book, in which he lays out a philosophy and roadmap for your future, the book is called, Oh, the Places You'll Go. He opens with, congratulations, today is your day, you're off to great places, you're off and away. And you will to go to great places. And doc, but Dr. Seuss also has some wise words of caution in that same book. Step with great care and great tact and remember that life is a great balancing act. And so that's what I would like to take a few minutes to talk about today, that balancing act. I believe in order for you to stay in balance as you go forward and to make progress in life, you sometimes have to be willing to accept risk. So while many will talk about your successes in the future, I want to take a little bit of time and talk about the fear of failure and actual failure at your graduation. A little, you know, Dr. Seuss-like, right? Because if I had let my fear of failure guide my path in life, 
I would not have been a success. So let me tell you a story to describe my point. I have two daughters, and when they were younger, you know, you are responsible as a parent to teach them to ride a bike. And I'm sure that all of you were taught by someone how to ride a bike at some point. There are two main methods to teach when you're teaching to ride a bike, okay? One's deception, and one is disregard. Deception is the one where they run behind you and they pretend they're holding on. That's deception. Disregard is where they hurl you down a hill. <laughs> Both methods, they're there shouting encouraging words to you. Well, my husband and I decided when we were going to teach our oldest daughter to ride a bike, she was about five or six. And we decided to combine the two methods. We decided we were gonna hurl her down a hill, run alongside, pretend we could catch her if she fell, and shout encouraging words. When our younger daughter, who was only about four or five, saw that we were gonna teach and take off the training wheels of the older daughter, she was having none of it. She wanted to learn how to ride her bike too. So we took the training wheels off of our younger daughter's bike also. And then we began the process, husband, wife, hurling child, and running down this hill in Kansas. Daughter number one immediately realized she was gonna fall and she was not gonna play this game with us. She jumped off her bike. She just jumped off, it was an amazing thing. One could say she was smart. She knew she was going to fail. She concluded she was gonna fall and so she jumped to safety. Daughter number two was the exact opposite. She pedaled and pedaled and pedaled. She fell repeatedly but got back on that bike and every time she went a little further. <coughs> so, needless to say, daughter number two learned to ride her bike that day. Daughter number one didn't learn till a year later um, when she felt like she was ready. So, is that bad parenting? Maybe, could be. Um, or maybe it's really the difference of daughter number two. She was not going to let her fear of falling, her fear of failure, hold her back from succeeding. Daughter number one, however, Dr. Seuss says it in his book. Dr. Seuss puts it best. He says, I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win because you play against you. So I'm here to tell you that if I had listened to my fear, I would not have followed my husband into the army. I knew nothing about being a soldier. I was scared to death, but I took a chance on myself. I accepted the challenge, not knowing if I would succeed. Gettysburg had taught me that I was capable of more than I ever imagined, and I was not going to hold myself back. I raised my right hand and I took that oath. And since then, I've never looked back. I've had my share of mistakes. I've had my share of missteps. I've fallen and I've gotten back up, dusted myself off and moved forward. The reality that the what ifs of life can paralyze you is not what you want to do. You want to continue to grow. There are many times that you'll find you won't succeed. And in those times, you will feel maybe that your confidence is thrown. But I ask you to think about that there are really two types of failure in life. There's the failure from trying, and there's the failure from not trying. And our society focuses a lot on the failure from trying. I would submit that that's not the failure that should give you angst. When you face failure after having tried, you gain from your efforts because you learn from those missteps and you continue to grow and you go farther on your bicycle. Failing can be a reflection of your perseverance. The failure I urge you to avoid is the failure from not trying. I submit 
that those who tell you they have never failed have never truly tried to reach and succeed in a challenge. They never challenge themselves to set expectations and to try to meet those expectations. You have to accept challenges and the fear of failure in order to truly succeed. President Ted, Teddy Kennedy, not Dr. Seuss, had a great way of putting this. The credit belongs to the man, and I'm gonna add in woman because I can. The credit belongs to the man or woman who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes up short again and again, but there is no effort without error and shortcomings, so that his or her place will never be with those cold and timid souls who never know victory or defeat. I look back and there were many times I could have declined the challenge and not risk the disappointment. I could have opted out, but I expected more from myself have expectations, be willing to risk disappointment, risk failing, and only then you can succeed. As Dr. Seuss says, oh, the places you'll go, but you'll go alone and you must go strong. There'll be your support network back there, shouting encouraging words as you go on your way, but don't let that fear of failure hold you back. Seek the challenges before you. Learn from your falls along the way. Don't take the safe route and jump off the bike. Dr. Seuss ends with, today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Go Bullets, Army Strong.